Puerto Rico. Oh, Jesus, I'm talking to me now because I don't understand some of the stuff I'm dealing with. But Lord God, I'm determined to do it your way. Jesus, help me, okay? And so watch this. There's, there's no question about people's zeal. And there's no question about the zeal of these people. And their zeal is on display every day as they try to get their lives in order. And it was especially evident when they set their minds to rebuild God's temple. Even though people tried everything they could possibly do to sabotage their efforts. And sometimes you got to understand that some people don't care what you've been through. And some people don't care what you're trying to accomplish. If they can stop you from being all God has called you to do, they'll try it. Yeah, don't fool yourself. Uh, some folk don't want to see you be successful. Some folk don't want to see you make it. Some, some folk don't want to see you come out of the situation they're in. If they can keep you in that situation, they'll do it. Oh God, but watch this. Even though people were attacking them, and even though people were trying to keep them from reestablishing the practices of God's command, they kept their zeal, and their zeal began to push them further. However, even though their motives were right, they lacked understanding. And since they didn't understand, uh, there was no order in what they were doing. It wasn't until King Artaxerxes of Persia gave Ezra his orders that things began to change and things began to turn around. You see, God used the Persians to release the Israelites from Babylonian captivity. Oh, Jesus. And there were they were. They were given orders to go back and start all over. But what they lacked was somebody who can help them understand what God's expectations were for them. So here they are. They're sent back to reestablish their lives. But they don't have anybody in their life that can help them understand what God's expectations were for them. Oh Jesus. But here comes Ezra now. Ezra was a scribe and a priest who had set in his heart to learn of God so that he could teach his people God's ways. Ezra being, oh my God, has been preparing himself for a long time for this job and his preparation has met its opportunity because his the people has a need. It's a perfect match because Ezra has a desire to teach people and the people have a need to be taught. So now it's in a win-win situation. Uh, somebody say you're about to get into a win-win situation, honey. I know it don't seem like much now. I know it don't seem like things are clicking now. But eventually, if you continue to prepare yourself, and if you continue, my God, to let God use you and flow in your life, you're about to be in a win-win situation, my God. And so as Ezra goes on, and he begins to flow in with his assignment, the first thing Ezra did was he began to work on church structure and church protocol. He put ministers in place to help with spiritual development. Oh God, because you got to remember they had a church, but they had nobody to lead them. They built their own church, but they had nobody to assist them. And so Ezra comes in and, and he starts out working in principles and teaching the principles of God. The first thing he did was he began to put ministers in place to help with the development of the people. Then he proclaimed a fast, and by doing so, he taught them, my God, how to depend on God. Oh, Jesus, his purpose for this was to show them God's ability to sustain them in their toughest time. You see, principles and practices such as fasting helps us become independent from our carnal nature and dependent on God. You know what I found out? Watch this. Here's something I found out last night. I found out that the sooner I discover that I am only human, the faster God can help me and shape me and mold me into what he wants me to be. But as long as I think I'm all anointed, as long as I I think I'm all dead in a bag of chips as long as I think that my stuff don't stink it's going to take forever for God to shake me but the moment that I 
begin to cry out and lay out, God, Lord, if you don't do something about this situation, nothing can be done. Lord, if you don't help me with these bills, nothing can be done. Lord God, if you don't shake some things in my life, nothing can be done. The moment that I begin to lay out and say, Lord, I'm only human, he'll be able to expede, my God, and, and accelerate my deliverance. He'll be able to accelerate, my God, my change and my appointed time. The moment that I begin to realize that I ain't nothing but a lump of clay, he'll begin to move in my life and shake things up for me. Because, Lord, I need you now. Oh, God, sometimes you think you're so anointed that you don't need nothing. Sometimes you think you're so anointed and so appointed that you don't need God to move. Oh, God, but that the devil is a lie. I need God right now. Now, oh Jesus, I don't know where y'all at, but I'm in a situation, Lord, where I need you. And so watch this, watch this. Uh, when people begin to operate in the principles of fasting and in the principles of God, uh, these principles help us to follow God's order through releasing ourselves from what we know and what we desire to what he desires. Oh Jesus. In other words, by fasting, I'm showing God that I'm ready to embrace his path without apprehensions. Oh, God. And so when you fast, you are saying, Lord, I'm ready to follow your divine provisions. Lord, I'm ready to follow your divine protection. And Lord, I'm ready to submit my will to yours. You see, when you have apprehensions about what God requires of you, you are not fully ready to walk in the knowledge that he has for you. But when you let your apprehensions go and you start telling God, Lord, I'm ready for more. Lord God, I'm no longer apprehensive about what you're required of me. Lord, I'm no longer apprehensive about what I should do where you're concerned. Lord, I'm letting all of my apprehensions go and I'm just going to fall into your embrace and let you do what me what you want to do. Lord, you set me how you want to see me. Lord, you break me how you want to break me. Lord, you mold me into what you want to mold me in. Oh God, I'm sick and tired of trying to do it my way. I'm sick and tired of trying to find things out on my own. Lord God, I have given up my apprehensions now. And Lord, I want you, Father God, to have your own way. Now somebody say, Lord, have that own way. And so the question now that God will ask you is because now I see that you release my God your apprehensions. I believe that you may be ready for more. Oh Jesus, but watch this, watch this. Uh, everything seemed good, my God, to Ezra, my God, and it seems like everybody was doing fine, my God. Oh God, under Ezra's leadership, he had cleaned up their image at church. And he got them to do right at church. But when he found out how they were living outside the church, it nearly wrecked him. My God, I'm here to preach now. You see, a word got back to Ezra that the people who were, what the people were doing uh, when church was over and how they were living ungodly lives elsewhere. Oh my God. And not only were the people living ungodly, but the church leaders was living ungodly. Oh my God. And so now Ezra is frustrated. Oh God, because he doesn't understand. Why is it that these people refuse to separate themselves from the lifestyle of the ungodly? Oh God. And so that's when Ezra realized that it doesn't matter how well people do at church. It doesn't matter how well they do their church duties. Oh God, if they don't have a lifestyle that honors God when the church is over. Oh God, when things are over at church, you still got to have a lifestyle that honors God. Oh God, when things are over at church, you still got to be able to live a life that can say that I am of God. And so Ezra now is really frustrated. And Ezra gets so frustrated that he just rips his clothes off and starts plucking his beard out and snatching his hair. But the devil is alive. I ain't gonna let church folk run me crazy till I rip my clothes off and start plucking. I ain't got enough hair now. I ain't got enough hair to pluck out. I ain't gonna lose my mind like that. Yes. <laughs> my God. And so what you got?
got to understand here is that Ezra got the